Take it, Jenny. Would you pray with me? The gracious God, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day, for this church, for this community that you allow us to be a part of and to serve. We ask as we come into your presence today, Lord, that uh, you would just allow your spirit to flow up over us, to ignite us, to make us excited about serving others through Christ's name. Be with us, Lord. Guide and direct us. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Now, if you'd like to join together, or we'll sing spirit song. Number 347, or one, uh, thing.
<clears throat> Would the ushers come forward for our morning offering? Father, we do come into your house to praise you and thank you for the love that you showed to us, the way you've taken care of us through this last week and the blessings of a new week to begin. We ask, Lord, as we return to you a part of what you blessed our lives with, that it might become a blessing to others through Christ our Lord. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. about what prayer is, is to think about just talking to God. It's a really simple thing. What kind of things do you think you could talk to God about? Hmm? I know you guys aren't that quiet all the time. <laughs> could, you, could, you, um, could you talk to God about, uh, you play soccer? Yeah, you do, don't you? Could you talk to God about a soccer game sometime? Hmm? You could, couldn't you? Yeah. Could you uh, could you talk to God about uh, um, your mom and dad? Hmm? Sure. There's there's some easy things to always do when you think about praying. You always want to thank God. What kind of things do you think of that you could thank God for? Could you thank him for having food to eat? Could you thank him for... How many of you have a dog at your house? Yeah. Could you thank God for that dog and having a dog that's fun to play with? Sure. There's just all kinds of things. You can, if you have a problem that you just can't figure out how to handle the problem or what to do with the problem, you can talk to God about that. He will help you figure out how. So um, I'm going to get you kids, I'm going to give you a head start, okay? You know what these little things are? 
timers. That's right. They, call, they used to call them egg timers, but they're just good timers. And these are supposed to be five minute timers. Now, I've not checked it, so I don't know for sure. But, you know, it's supposed to take a certain amount of time for the sand to run from one end down to the other end. So we're going to say they're five minute timers for now. And I'm going to give you kids each one of these, okay? And what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you every day to pray. Now, five minutes doesn't sound like very much time, but I know sometimes five minutes can be forever. And so what I want you guys to do is I want you to pray for just half of that amount of time. So that means when... When you turn it over, when it starts fresh, and, well, let me find one that doesn't have any. When you turn it over, you only have to pray till about half of the sand has run down. Can you do that? And there's only two things I want you to pray about this week. I want you to find all the things you can think of every day to thank God for. And the other thing I want you to pray for is I want you to pray for, um, I'm going to use the word, no, I'm not going to use that word. I'm going to use the word um, awakening. Awakening means that you go, oh, I understand. Okay? Now, I'm not going to tell you any more about that right now. Uh, you guys will understand it better as time goes by. So um, let's let's take a minute and we'll start a prayer right now. And then every day I want you to spend a half of that time thanking God for something that He's done for you, something He provides for you, something He gives you, and a little bit of time. Just praying that he wakes everybody up. Okay? All right. Let's pray real quick. Father God, these kids are, are such a, a joy to all of us older folks here. They just remind us that life goes on and we are so thankful for that. So we as their church family, we want to thank you for having them be among us and reminding us of all the fun it is to be kids, to be with kids, and to just enjoy one another. We thank you for this gift that we call prayer, and we just ask that in these next weeks that you would hear our prayer. Amen. All right. They will break, so you got to be careful with them. Take one, and you can go back and that it's your seeds and see how that all runs through, okay? Don't forget, every day, a half a, a half of prayer for Nikki. Oh my gosh, you look good? I don't know. Here, here's your Let's see. 60 times 5? Yeah, 300 seconds. You're right. <laughs> 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 Didn't know you was going to have a math lesson, did you? <laughs> well, I'm going to start out with the joys today. How many of you have ever heard of Wilmore, Kentucky? You know, there's something going on in Wilmore, Kentucky. Asbury College, and they've had a, a revival breakout for the last seven days, and it continues on. Nikki was reading some things this morning to me. One woman baked, I don't know how many dozen cookies from Indianapolis and, and took them down to As, uh, Asbury to uh, 
give to the people. But what is happening there is a little over a week ago in a normal service that they usually have for the kids, and the kids are required to attend so many services a year. Well, in the service, after the preaching was all done, the service was done. The kids stayed. They just stayed. They started praying. They started singing. They started repenting. Some kids left, went to the professor, and said, hey, can I go back to the chapel? And the professors allowed them. One night, the sanctuary was packed with over 30,000 people. Standing room only. But the amazing thing was outside the chapel, in 54 degree weather, with rain coming down, people by the thousands were worshiping, watching a screen. Because something is happening with the young people of America. Buses are coming in from colleges all over the United States, and people are coming from all over the world to witness what was going on there. Now, they don't just worship for an hour. They went for over 24 hours at times. And the amazing thing is, as they've continued to worship, people have stepped up. With like 50 pizzas to help feed the people. Chick-fil-A sent in food from their facility. And as I said, this woman from Indianapolis stayed up all night baking cookies and driving down there to feed them. But it's what can happen with prayer. And we're going to learn a whole lot more about that over the next few weeks. What can happen with prayer. But the amazing thing to me is God is showing himself still alive and still moving in this world, in this nation that we are so worried and struggling with. When in reality, maybe we're focusing on the wrong thing. We need to be focusing on a loving God who's still working in our world today. In our lives and in the lives of our young people. Our future. And we need to be praising God for that. What other joys have we got to share this morning? Sandy? Well, I can't eat that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to thank all the ladies for, for their help last week um, in the meal um, at the church. I also um, want to vote, maybe, about our women's group because um, we had more than what we have had in the treasury for a while and so we decided to send money to Heifer International. We decided this year, instead of, I think we had done a water buffalo the last time we did it, which was like $250. This year we sent $750 for water for life, so it's to dig a well so that people don't have to walk for miles and miles to get their water and bring back to them. They'll have a well right there. Um, we also spent another $60 for seeds for them to be able to plant a garden. So I'm so thankful for the women in this church. I think the women need a hand.
Because we may be small, but we're sure doing a, a lot to make a difference in the world that we live in. So praise God for that. So, that he's allowed us to have that ability. So. Other joys? Other concerns? The list before the Lord this morning. Uh, a joy and a concern is um, making a second operation with the doctor said as well as uh, possibly could have. So that's a joy. And concern is my sister Deanna. She's uh, had 13 uh, treatments so far and, and she still has a, a bad cough that she can't sleep. And, She's lost, I don't know, 20-some pounds, and she's not a big woman, <clears throat> so that's a significant amount. And we for her, and she just can't sleep at night because of her coffee. So we pray for her. Yeah, okay. Others? Alex? Don was in the hospital Saturday because I let him go home. And he's, he's having problems with, uh, we're not real sure, we think it's prostate, but, um, but he's a, got blood in his urine, so he didn't feel like he needs, he wanted to stay close to home today. We've battled this for several years, so. That doesn't make it any easier. No. <laughs> I always tell the hospital, well, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> Alex? Uh, I have a good friend of mine that lives pretty close to East Palestine, Ohio. And the family's there with the, the chemicals that they had just burned off. So, just some prayers to go out for them, please. Yeah. Frank? So, uh, <clears throat> my company just had their uh, sales meeting and they kind of talked about their vision for uh, 2023 and uh, there's a lot of joys and concerns with it um, there's some of the changes sound like really great ideas for us some of us feel the concerns about growing too fast you know some of the stuff as far as business is kind of over the head of a bunch of fish farmers but you know we have a lot of confidence in some of the people who are running the show but you know with big leaps and bounds there's always concerns I think so they're really thinking big as the future grows, so just pray for that. Okay. May change some changes. Change is not always easy. We we sort of resist change, don't we? <laughs> so, then, Sandy. Um, our neighbor Max passed away. Um, so yeah. prayers for his wife Linda and the rest of the family. Okay. <clears throat> Are there others? I did get my joy in time, but I'll put it in the house. That's fine. <laughs> Sean Hafner was there with his trailer yesterday. He loaded up a whole bunch of boxes that I had filled that Linda Parker brought me from Walmart. And he will put them online, and it doesn't make sense <coughs> anything I have. And he had a young woman with him, and she wanted to see the whole house. She said, your house is beautiful. I said, that's why I'm still trying to stay here. <laughs> One of many reasons. So it was, it was very nice. Yeah, good, 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 good. So. Good. Good. Good, good, good. So. Are there others? Yes. Um, my grandma is really well. She had her chemotherapy and um, we prayed out that way. Yeah. What's your grandma's name? Ruby. 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 I know you've told me before, but my mind's about that line. It's good, but it's only about that long. <laughs> yeah, so. Marie? A joy and a concern. We, are, we get to go to a first birthday party next weekend. Uh -huh. And traveling mercy for us to get there. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go day, you can just about be blowed down there, no gas at all. <laughs> we're that too. Yeah. <laughs> the other part of my joy is I'm glad this church is here. This is wonderful. Yeah. Well, I think this church has a purpose in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And you're fulfilling it 
to the best of your capabilities, and I think you're doing a wonderful job. So. Are there others? Well, we're going to start out a little bit different today. Remember those little cards I gave you last week? I hope you brought them. <laughs> My wife says it's on the screen, so there we go. Let's start out with that breakthrough prayer, shall we? God, please break through and open doors to new hopes, dreams, and possibilities for our church and in our lives and we will surrender and faithfully follow Christ unto the open road adventure of your new and unknown future. May your will be done. Amen. That is our prayer, Lord, that your will be done. As we come into your presence this morning, we give you thanks for the way you have loved us, the way you take care of us, the hope you give to us, the future you have given to us. We pray for your help in the new direction that we might be going. And we pray for our community, especially for those, Lord, who do not know you yet. Help us to be a witness to your love and your love for them. Help us to be an accepting church no matter who they are. To open our lives to them and share the love of God with them. Lord, my prayer is to see a breakthrough, a breakout like it's happening at, at Wilmore, Kentucky right now to see your Holy Spirit moving amongst each and every one of us in new and exciting ways. To be open enough to pray for each other and share our struggles and to repent, Lord, when we need to. It's because we are human, Lord, we often need to and to help us to grow into the Christian you want us to be. Lord, you've heard our prayers and our concerns that's lifted up this morning. We bring them to you, Lord, because you're the only one that can really do anything about it. We praise you for doctors and nurses and what they're able to do. But ultimately, the healing, the comfort, the peace comes through you. So we ask, Lord, that you would be with be with Max. We know where he is today. More than that, be with his family. We know that there's a promise you give us in the scriptures that tells about those who mourn. So we allow them to feel your grace and your peace, your love, your mercy, and your hope. We ask too, Lord, that you be with Ruby as she goes through this cancer treatment. And with Monty's sister as she struggles. Ultimately, Lord, we wish that we could be right here, that we could lay hands upon them and, and pray for healing. But we know that's not necessary because you can do it from afar. So reach out and touch each one of them, Lord. May they feel your peace, your comfort. May they feel your healing. They know your hope. Be with Becky, Lord, as she continues to heal from her eye surgeries and just continues to, to see this world in a new light. 
We ask too, Lord, that you be with Deanna as, as she's already been fighting this cancer for a while and, and ask that you would just surround her with your love. That you would reach out and touch those spots that need to be removed or shrunk. Uh, that the doctors would be able to say, you're cancer free once again. We pray, Lord, that uh, you hear our prayers for Alex's friend who's over there in Ohio where the train happened, a train accident happened. And that whole community, Lord, that, that's wondering what kind of toxic fumes are, are being spread all throughout the, the community. So watch over them, Lord. Protect them as best you can. Help them to get this cleaned up as quickly as possible so it doesn't affect the water that they drink and things that we don't think of as human beings, but stuff that affects still individual lives. And Lord, we pray for Frank and his company and the decisions they're making, the decisions that might make for individuals within the company. We know our desire is always to to want to grow and to uh, and to become wealthier. And, to be able to acquire more things. But in reality, the greatest thing that we can acquire is you, our Lord, our Savior. And we come to you this morning because of that, as your children. Because we are your children, Lord, Lord we ask you to hear our prayers and join together saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Luke chapter 6, verse 47 to 49, one that we should be very familiar with now because this is the, the fourth week. And that's why I, I am going to read it to you out of the message from Eugene Peterson. Why are you so polite with me, always saying, yes, sir, and that's right, sir, but never doing a thing, I tell you. These words I speak to you are not mere additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundation words, words to build a life on. If you work with the words in your life, you are like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on bedrock. And when the river burst its bank, crashing against the house, Nothing could shake it. It was built to last. But if you just use my words in the Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you're like a dumb carpenter who built a house but skipped the foundation. When the swollen rivers came crashing in, it collapsed like a house of cards. It was a total loss. The words of God for the people of God. 
Praise be to God. Well, today we're wrapping up the series that we've titled Into the Deep. A series that was about living more than just on the surface level. It's about living a deep life, an abundant life. The kind of life that Jesus promised in John 10.10 10, when he said, I have come that you might have life Life to the full. Really a series this like this could go on for a whole year, really. Because there's a sense in which when we preach on living a deeper life each Sunday, that it helps us grow a little bit more. But the purpose of this series was outlined as only four weeks so that we could begin the Lenten study next week. In that first week, we looked at how do you deal with stress. Now, I know no one in here has stress, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, stress is a killer. The second week, we looked at journeying into a deeper life that is a daily journey. In other words, fulfilling days so that you nail down what matters most to you and you spend your days doing those things. Last week, the talk was about going deeper in your relationship. All relationships, really. Family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, everyone, but especially, especially the relationship with Jesus Christ. Today we're going to look at the fourth aspect of living a deeper life. But we need to ask and answer a question first. What does it mean to be deep? When you hear someone say, oh, he's deep, what are you really saying? That that person has deep thoughts, that that person has deep contemplations, that he has deep topics, that he, he or him or her express themselves in profound ways. Many times that's what we mean. We think that being deep revolves around what you think, what you read, what you say, maybe the kind of music you listen to. You see, deep people really are people of classical music. Oh, well, maybe deep people are really people of jazz. Or maybe deep people are really people that listen to music of the 50s and the 60s. <laughs> well, the same can be said about what we talk about in our spiritual growth. Most often, death is measured by what you read and what you think and what you say. So if you can discuss theological imperatives for the post-emergent church, people are probably thinking you are deep. Now, everyone understood that entirely, didn't you? Big words that went right over the top. I don't think that's what it is. 
If you repeat words like paradigm and narrative and phrases like where faith intersects with culture, you can probably find some work in a lecture circuit. But it won't go over in most churches. Because we're talking to the common people. And yes, there's some that may understand what those words mean. But it's not words that we use on an everyday type life, is it? My point is not to minimize the value of thinking, reading, and discussing important issues. My point is that thinking and reading and talking aren't enough. The paraphrase from Forrest Gump's mother was this, deep is as deep does. I like this other one that Forrest said, life is like a box of chocolates. <clears throat> you never quite know what you're going to get. It's great to read intellectually challenging works of literature and theology. It's great to grapple with difficult questions of life. It's great to discuss and even debate the merits of political and sociological and theological ideas. What makes these things worthwhile is that they're supposed to lead you to action. You read, you think, you discuss, and then you do. Jesus put it like this. I will show you what it is like who comes to me and hears my word and puts them into practice. And then he went on to tell about the man who built his house upon the rock. And the man who built his house upon the sand. The one who built his house upon the rock listened to him. The one who built his house upon the sand didn't. They both had the same circumstance. They were both faced with storms. And we're going to have storms in this world that we live in. I would imagine their house basically was about the same, except for one thing. One was built on a strong foundation, the other wasn't. So the difference was that foundation of the house. What makes up our foundation? Our foundation is made up by our belief. Our values, our thoughts, our ideas. But Jesus says that's not really the important thing. What really is important is our actions. It's what you do. The foundation of your life is made up of things that you practice. If you try to build your life merely on talk and debate and good ideas and good intentions, you will not withstand the storms of life. Your only way to ensure that your house can endure life's problems, the storms of life, is to build on a foundation of action. That means taking the words of Jesus and putting them into practice. The deeper life consists not of deep thoughts, deep words, deep ideas, and deep acts but of deep actions. More than anything else, your actions define the content of your life. 
It's your actions that enable you to make a difference in the life of others. And so we're going to look at three action-inspiring habits to develop. The first one is to challenge your intellect. What books have you read recently? I encourage you to always be working your way through a book of some sort. And I hope one of those books is called the Bible. Choose books that are creative. Read authors you've never read before. Read genres you've never read before. If you like fiction, then maybe try a prayer book or a disciple book. If you typically read one of my favorite authors, authors Max Licato, maybe it's time to read something else. Now, there are people out there that will tell you you can't trust anything written after 1974. Well, when I was in, going to college over at Taylor University, we were required to make a list of the books that we had in our library. And I was blessed by having a bunch of hand-me-down books by some previous pastors that had retired. And when I put those books on the list and handed them in to the professor, he said, ooh, you're really reading a lot of liberal stuff, aren't you? They may have been a lot of liberal stuff, but the first book that I was interpreting them by was by the Bible. What did the Bible say? We ran into the trouble while I was there with uh, One of the theologians that I like to, to quote and use often in my preaching class and things like that, the one teacher that we had, one professor we had, Nikki was had the, the opportunity to have, I'll, I'll put it that way, And when he went in, or she went into his class on theology, he looked at her and he said, Nikki, you'll never be a good wife if you become a pastor. Because according to his understanding of the scripture, what Paul said, women can't lead men. But he sort of took that out of context. Because Paul was talking about a new church, a young church. And so he was trying to keep that young church from being led the wrong way by young women that didn't know entirely what they were talking about yet. I ran into the same thing when one of the theologians I like to, to read. And he wrote a Bible, a daily Bible study on the entire New Testament. It's one that I'd highly recommend you to, to find and read. You do like me, it's the cheap way, get it online <laughs> and read it there. But his name's William Barclay. 
and this happened, this particular professor called William Barclay, his personal heritage. In other words, he didn't believe a lot of what William Barclay said because it didn't agree with his theology. I will go on to say that this, this particular professor taught Romans, the whole book of Romans. He would not use the Bible. He would not use anybody else's interpretation. He would only use his interpretation of the Bible of the book of Romans. Now he was a great teacher because he helped write. He helped write the NIV, the New International Version of the, the Scriptures. If you look at the translators they have in there, you'll find his name. His name was Dr. Gary. So we live in a society that comes to political and spiritual beliefs. Many people are looking to be spoon-fed. They just want to hear what they have already believed. And I'm challenging you to stretch yourself intellectually, to make an effort to listen and understand other people's ideas, even if they don't agree with you. Secondly, practice solution-driven thinking. You know, we live in a society today that has a problem with complaining about everything that goes on. We complain about the weather if it isn't perfect. We complain about the politics. We complain about what our world's leader's doing. Can any of you do anything about that? You can get out and vote. But that's about all we can do. We can make ourselves be heard, but in reality, we really can't do anything about it. So we love to complain. But what would happen if instead of complaining, we would love to try to find solutions to the problem? A group was gathered to discuss some issues when one of the men offered this platitude. A problem identified is a problem half solved. Another man spoke up and said, no, a problem identified is kids play. Anyone can point out a problem. The question is, do we have the leadership to fix it. We can grumble and complain, but complaints don't focus on the solution. They make the problem a little louder. Christ said this, stop grumbling. Stop grumbling among yourselves. Later James wrote, don't grumble against each other or you will be judged. And Paul wrote, do everything without complaining or arguing. Because complaints aren't solution driven. They just magnify the problem. So in order to have a deeper life experience, commit yourself the solution thinking. Instead of saying this is a problem, I don't like it, say how can this problem be solved? Who can help me solve it? And that leads to the third encourage you thing, habit to encourage you. And it really comes down to a big question. 
It's been seven been said that the seven last words of the church are what? I've never done it that way before. Or we've never done it that way before. If you've ever tried to change anything in your church, you've probably heard those words. More importantly, though, are the last seven words of our disciples. They are also the seven words of a deeper life. Do you know what they are? Can you guess what they are? It's something you need to be saying every day when you get out of bed. Some of you may already do it. What am I going to do today? What am I going to do today? It's the most, in question, most important question in your life because it's the quality of, quality of your existence the quality of your relationship, the quality of your future hangs on the answer to this question. What am I going to do today? This is why I say we need to challenge ourselves intellectually to explore new ideas and listen to new voices and think outside the box and learn to listen with discernment. You don't think that's happening at Wilmore, Kentucky? Whoever that speaker was, that preacher done that, that first morning, when he got done and stepped out of the pulpit and all this began happening, he didn't step in there and try to start micromanaging it. He stepped out of the way. And he stayed out of the way because it was not of him. It was of God. And he's let God be the one in charge. How many times do we say to ourselves, if it doesn't get done, I've got to do it. Or no one else is going to do it, i got to instead of giving God a chance to work in other people's lives to step up. Therefore, James says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. James 1, verse 22 to 25. You see, James echoed the teachings of Jesus when he said, He who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a man who built his house upon a foundation of solid rock. No amount of rain, wind, or rising water can destroy it. Jesus was very plain about that. What you do is what really matters. And that's why I'm encouraging you to think thoughts, read books, listen to messages, have conversation, and it inspires you to take action 
consistent with the gospel. As we wrap up this series, my prayer for you as we go into Lent is that we move deeper in prayer, that we move deeper in Bible study, that we move deeper in worship, deeper in service, and deeper in giving. As I've read the stuff about what's taking place in Wilmore, Kentucky, you're hearing all of this taking place. As people gather, unknown people gathering in prayer groups and praying for each other. People from around the world singing and praising God and there's nothing on the screens. They're not picking up books. They're singing from in here what God is doing in their lives. When young people are coming there with addictions and going for seven days without that addiction already, God is moving. God is not just moving in Wellmore, Kentucky. I think God is moving in America. And I think God can and will move right here at Arcola. If we pray fervently, if we stay in his words, and if we put into action his will, not ours. Would you pray with me? Father, it is our desire to follow your will. For us as human beings, that can sometimes be hard. But with the help of your Holy Spirit, Lord, reach out and touch us. Reach out and move us closer. Reach out and make us more willing to be your servant. to the world we live in, to our community, and to you. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's close this morning by singing, There's Within My Heart a Melody.
grace us, Lord, as we go forth into this world. Help us to follow your will. Be with us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go with God's blessing. Go with God's peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.